Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the newest edition of Community Chats. My name is Erin Oath, and I am a project manager for community engagement here at the University of Mississippi. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Jody Holland. Uh, community Chats is a series of conversations with individuals in the Lafayette Oxford community who are working hard to make a positive difference in our region. And we have so enjoyed getting to know some of these leaders. Community Chats is an initiative of the Office of Community Engagement at the University of Mississippi and our friends at LOFT, the Lafayette Oxford Foundation for Tomorrow. Today, we are pleased to have John Winnett on the show with us, joining us to share about the Oxford to the Ballot Box initiative. So John, we're so delighted to have you on the show today. Welcome. Well, hi and hello there and thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. And I'm honored to, to join an August group of people who've preceded me and I'm sure who will follow me. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. So as we get started, would you just introduce yourself and share a little bit about how you came to Oxford and the Oxford Ballot, ballot to the Box, oh, Oxford <laughs> to the Ballot Box initiative? I'd be happy to do that. My name is John Winnett. I actually, my full name is Jonathan Winnett, but while my mother was living, I only heard me called Jonathan when I was in deep trouble. But um, uh, I was born in California. My mother was a single mom, an untenured faculty professor, and we moved just about every two years. When I was 12, she got a job at the American College in Paris, and so I spent my wonder years abroad um, in Francophone culture. Um, how I got to Oxford is a, is a good, excellent question and one worth answering. Uh, my colleague, Alan Spohr, who sends his regards, who's part uh, equal partner in the Oxford to the Ballot Box project, was a VISTA volunteer living in Oxford for two years with his wife, Susan. They worked with the North Panola School District and Sardis, the Sardis Library. I was lucky enough, I'm a professor at the University of Iowa. I was lucky enough to be invited down for Thanksgiving some years ago. And you had me at Oxford, Mississippi. <laughs> Although you're, you're missing a Waffle House and I really think the city needs to take care of that. But um, I came and visited I got really intrigued and very interested in Southern culture, very interested in how Oxford and both Oxford and Mississippi are very big in the national consciousness. They're, they're powerful, they're evocative. The history is rich and deep. I was able to visit two more times and through the goodness of the Mississippi Humanities Council, we were awarded a grant to work with the Yakna Patafa Arts Council on a project dubbed Oxford to the Ballot Box, which was going to look at the 2020 elections. Um, and then last March, around March 12th, I was minding my own business, teaching at the University of California at Berkeley and COVID hit. And I won't say that's the last time I've been outside but I have been sheltered in place to a great degree since then. So um, our project is a, we refer to it as a public digital humanities project that engages community. So all along the design of the project was to use digital technologies to both reach an audience, but also to encourage participation and to invite people to become part of the project. Uh, which is not to say that as we were finishing our grant application, we didn't realize that we were going to have to make a major pivot. We did anticipate spending a few months living in Oxford. Alan had been there for two years. This was going to be the longest time I'd spent in your town. And I hope you won't feel that I'm an interloper. I do feel so honored by the, by the Yakna Patafa Arts Council and other other partners in the project to I feel like a permanent part-time resident of Oxford and can't wait to get back. Well, we always welcome people here and 
I'd love to know more about your, your background and story as we learn more about this initiative. John, tell us a little bit more in detail about the Oxford um, to the ballot box and what you're doing specifically in the LOU community. Well, thank you. And, and again, thanks for the opportunity to share a little bit about the project. So as we were developing the project, um, through one lens, we've been developing it for three years, but mostly over the summer, we've, we've gotten down to cases. But um, the intention of the project was to encourage thoughtful, civic, and civil conversation, not only about the people running for president, and we're not to say that isn't important, but, but the issues that are driving people's interest in voting, the issues that keep them up at night, the issues that give them hope. And uh, one of the important things that I do in all of my projects, community-based projects, is to provide a voice, often to people who perhaps haven't had the opportunity to express themselves more widely, more publicly. So in addition to the Yakna Patafa Arts Council, we've, we've had a wonderful collaboration with the Oxford Film Festival, and I encourage everyone to support them. We love them. I believe that if you get out to the drive-in at Connor Motors in the to see whatever show you're going to watch in the pre-reel, you may get short videos from our project encouraging voter participation and engagement in the issues. Um, That's excellent. It's great. Yeah. Thanks for letting that I'm happen. so long-winded that I forgot what the question was, but <laughs> <laughs> let us proceed. Tell us about the, the project. Yeah, Aaron, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just pick up right there. So how can people watch some of these clips? How can they browse your collection and hear these stories? Well, prefacing this by saying I don't think there's anything, and as a college professor, I've been a, been guilty to this, but I don't think there's anything more boring than watching someone else guide you through a website. But if you'll allow me in a minute, I'll show the website, but I'll just give you a kind of preview now. Uh, and I failed to mention this, but um, in addition to our Lafayette Oxford partners, um, the University of Mississippi has been fantastic. Uh, early consultant was the University of Mississippi Museum. And then in the last few months, we are so pleased to have discovered Dr. Nayun Lee and Aaron, whose last name I'm not going to try to pronounce because I've <laughs> never heard it. <laughs> but um, they have been great, as has the School of Social Work graduate students, in particular, Austin Connor, um, uh, JC Brown, another uh, social work student has been fantastic. We also have a production assistant, uh, Eddie Thompson, who's been great, who's a senior, he's from Panola and actually Alan was able to dig up pictures of him at the prom at North Panola High School. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a long reaching me uh, memory. We were also working with writing and rhetoric. Uh, in fact, a class called uh, Writing for Community. Uh, actually, I think it's called Community Writing, led by Professor Don Unger. They're actually working at this very moment on a series of podcasts, which we are going to add to our website. There'll be a tab. Right now, the most important tab in our minds is the one called Mississippi Voices. And that's really where we, the, we showcase the interviews we've done. To credit one more very important partner has been uh, political science and in particular Professor uh, Marvin King Jr. and Professor Sue Ann Skipworth. And uh, Dr. King was kind enough to deliver a 20 minute overview of his perceptions on the importance of voting, and that's a featured part of, of Mississippi Voices. If this is a good time to take a look at the uh, website, oh, it says I'm not quite yet permitted to do that. So I think somebody has to say it's okay for me to share my screen. 
I think Aaron does. And you've talked a lot about the partners and I, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask. And as you're developing okay. this and she's, uh, she's going through the process of giving you permission, you okay. talked about this grant. I, I missed the funder of this. Who's supporting this? It's actually the Mississippi Humanities Council. Okay. And uh, I've got to say, I give them, uh, we are so honored that they were willing to look at this project, understand that its dimensions were bound to be affected by COVID. Of course, none of us knew. We thought by now it might be over. I'm a pessimist who thinks it may not be over for another 14 to 16 months, but um, uh, they are an important element. They also, I encourage everyone to apply for their grants. You need a lot of time though. <laughs> Don't set aside an afternoon to finish one of their grants. Um, well, that's a great part that is, developed here. Yeah, and they, uh, they provide fantastic feedback. So um, even if we hadn't gotten the grant, the process of applying for it through them was, has been invaluable. And they've also provided uh, great introductions to people in community. I want to credit to um, uh, Ruth Ann. Oh, I'm going to get this right. I'm so sorry. There's two different people, but Donna Ruth Roberts, who's been very active in the Republican Party, who's been great. We've had a chance to talk to her. And then a number of people uh, affiliated with the Democratic Party uh, giving us leads or, uh, and then just general community members like Alice Purati, who I know is also featured on one of these chats, um, who just have fantastic insight and have really made, uh, provided us the opportunity to meet people. But I'm going to go back to something that you said, Jody. This really does, Oxford feels like a community that welcomes people um, who come into it. And, and again, it's been a pleasure and an honor. And if we'll get back as soon as we can travel, I'm loading up the car with bologna sandwiches and Gatorade and I'm driving over. <laughs> Fantastic. Shall we try, shall I go ahead and try to share the screen? Yes, you should have permission now. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I promised to make this very quick. Oh, we don't wanna quite go there now. Here we go, oops, sorry. Sorry to the editor if they have to glitch <laughs> this out. Oh, this thing's getting in my way, I'm sorry. Here we go. Um, so this is a very quick overview. The best way to see our project is to visit Oxford to the Ballot Box, the website, although I have asked um, Will to put in links to our, uh, I'm sorry to do this to you. Can you see this? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so here's the website. Um, we are really lucky to, to have the University of Mississippi Digital Library um, archive this. So once we decide the project is done, and I hope that that's sometime uh, as we get to the end of spring, that all of the materials we've collected, all the videos, the audio interviews, the ephemera, um, you know, the correspondence, all of that will become part of the University of Mississippi uh, digital archive. And, and in our mind, this project is a snapshot of now, of what people were thinking about, about, um, you know, the important issues driving voting in the election. But it, we also think of it as a postcard to the future. So scholars in the future will have material that they can look at. So I'm going to click on this tab. I think it's the only one I'm going to click on. So I promised you not a long tour, but this is, you will recognize a number of these people. This is 15 of, oh, about 25 interviews we've done so far. Um, I was gonna hold this one to the end, but I think I'm, I was asked if at the end there was one minute for me to sit yeah. address the public. And I've decided that um, really it, it should go to, to uh, an Oxford resident and I'm going to choose, um, you may recognize him. 
the former mayor of Oxford, Richard Howorth, and we asked him to just comment briefly on the history of voting. So you'll see this video, but again, this is one of many and we encourage you to visit them. Registering to vote and voting really, really matter. And uh, if you care about our, your community, your state, your, our country, um, nothing is more important than voting. So I, that, that's the shortest, by the way, of our clips, but he also spoke very articulately. Oops. There we go. <laughs> I am so sorry. We're I, not editing that out. <laughs> at least it was Aretha, which is, you know, that works. Um, I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud to be a fan of hers. Um, that is the shortest of the videos. There's ones that are more in depth. Uh, we will eventually publish the longer interview with Mr. Howorth, who talks about his experience of running for election. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fascinating. And Well, John, along that regard, after interviewing so many uh, individuals, what are some of the themes? What have you learned? What do people keep saying about what gives them hope or, or what's encouraging them, motivating them in this election? I think generally speaking, um, we're really struck by a high degree of enthusiasm and a deep commitment to voting. And we have learned that voting has been hard earned by many Mississippians and issues around voter suppression and just some of the complexities of voting are still keeping more people from voting than we would like. But um, the flag is not that big of an issue as it turns out. That really got resolved beforehand. But I think the pandemic, the economy, Black Lives Matter, the way in which um, shelter in place or the sort of restrictions on people's uh, right to circulate is important to many people. Um, and I think for young people, it's, uh, it's really been interesting because this is their first time. A number of the students we talked to, they've never voted before. In fact, we talked to a member of the School of Social Work who the first presidential debate she watched was the first presidential debate here. And I remember her saying, and so candidly, she said, now, now are all the debates like that? <laughs> that was the one that, I mean, in the future, people won't remember this, but it was very chaotic. And there were like over a hundred interruptions of people. But I do think it demonstrates a kind of commitment and an interest in civic engagement. And uh, from all we, we know, when people vote early in their lives, they vote the rest of their lives. And we are strong advocates that, that voting is your voice. Um, I will say this too, that I think this is gonna be a complicated election. And I think the real work, whatever the outcome, will begin on November 4th. So we're not racing to a finish line voting day. We're projecting ahead. So in fact, we hope that we'll have a chance to continue our conversations with people after the third talk about their impressions about what happened or how they see the outcome. Um, we, of course, none of us know what that will be, and we don't know what the national reaction will be. But um, I think it's the Chinese that use the, have the proverb, and it's a curse, may you live in interesting times. But I got to say, <laughs> we, are living, we are living in the most interesting of times right now. And I think just to be aware and to seize the moment to reflect on our country is, is what motivates us. I do wanna give one more credit to Mississippi Votes and to the League of Women Voters, um, both nonpartisan groups that like us, 
uh, share the idea that getting out the vote's important. And that in general, the, the idea that democracy, small d, democracy is not a once every four years or in Mississippi, a once every year exercise in voting, it's something that we all need to practice every day. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you all. Um, uh, I wanna to say too, if anyone's listening, please visit our website. And also if you want your voice heard, we would like to interview you. We would like to talk with you. And really it's, it falls within a category that I call American voice. The, our motivation in, in these conversations is to hear what you have to say. So no gotcha journalism. That's great. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Thank you so much, John. This has been such a rich conversation. And uh, just thank you for elevating the voices of other Mississippians. Um, it, it's just a pleasure. I just want to go watch all the videos now. It's been some <laughs> all right. Time well, way. well, I'm honored. And you all take care. Be safe. And uh, uh, we will continue our partnership, I hope, and it truly has been an honor to be part of this conversation this morning. Thank you. Thank for you. sure. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in to this edition of Community Chats. If you've enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe to become a regular listener and share it with others in your network. Uh, we want to keep elevating these conversations and elevate the good work going on. So spread some hope and share the feed. Um, stay engaged, stay safe, and we'll see you next time on Community Chats.